Hey everybody, welcome to Haywood RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, uh, here with the 6,025 pound Wildwood 263 BHXL. This is a straightforward, no nonsense, but really smartly equipped family camper right here. And if you're sitting on the fence between, okay, so I've got a half ton with a proper tow package or bigger, uh, you know, I've got the capacities I could handle something like this. Do I get the one with the slide without the slide? I can tell you, you are not likely to regret getting the one with the slide. I know it's a little extra weight, a little extra money. You won't regret the extra space and comfort you get from it. You might regret not having it. And frankly, I'm a textbook example of that. I camp in what is effectively the no slide version of a bunkhouse like this. And I, I try to go out for at least four day weekends. And at the end of a four day weekend, we are coming real close to that cabin fever, anger, snapping where we're tired of doing the travel trailer two step to get around one another. Now you'll see a lot in common uh, from the 21 season to this 22 update right here. Uh, Wildwood didn't go chasing waterfalls. They stuck to the rivers and lakes that they're used to and my hats are absolutely off to them uh, for that. I say hats because I, I wear quite a few of them around here at Haywood RV. Um, they, they know what works, they know who they are, they stuck to their identity, they didn't try to reinvent the wheel. They just do really smart creative things like they got rid of the carpet in the slide, they've got uh, you know the Versa Lounge, they, they've had those things, but they've added some smart, easy to miss features like roof solar prep, a little laundry basket to keep yesterday's clothes contained now that it's today. Um, uh, a bunch of little details like that. There, None of these are like, oh, I'm going to get it because of that. It's a bunch of little drops in the bucket that you don't realize how much you appreciate until you actually go camping and get out in one. So as we go through, let us know the things that you like. Let us know the things you change given the opportunity. And I will leave you some links in the video description to check out. There's just everybody and their brother builds a layout like this. We've got a bunch of different options for you. But let's get inside of this one. This is one of those layouts. I I really feel, especially with the updates they've put in it in the last year or two, it feels very much like an unsung hero to me. Now, I can acknowledge, um, you know, some people think, man, it's weird that those big windows don't open for airflow. The slide side windows open for airflow. The big windows give us lots of light and visibility. I can acknowledge that's a little bit irregular. It doesn't bother me. Maybe it bothers you. And if it does... I would highly encourage you to take a look at some of the other things that we offer for you here at our dealership. Not, I mean, we've got a very vast, wide, robust lineup, but in this class and price point, Jayco and Wildwood are the only ones doing carpetless slides, uh, which is just, it's its something I know a lot of people look for, and they've, they've changed it up a little bit. It, you still have the little tow kit because it is a step up slide system here, which is one of the reasons this is lighter than Big Brother Full Wildwood, but it's not nearly as bulky. They've actually done everything they could to shove everything back as far as they possibly could. And you will see that x Light Wildwoods do not use floor heater vents. This is carpetless. This is ventless. Um, the uh, the Full Blood Wildwood cannot say either of those things. So there's actually a weird couple ways where the x Light, which you would consider the Little Brother, is in a sense superior to its big brother. It's it's just very interesting how that's worked out. Now I mentioned earlier, this is uh, prep for solar on the roof now. That's where a charge controller could be located. But one of my favorite features uh, on the 22 update series is the dimmable lighting in the living room that you have here. Now with those giant windows opening, letting a flood of light in here, you're not going to get a very great effect. But you have dimmer switch lighting uh, 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 up top in your main cabin area. You have accent lighting over the side. There's new accent lighting under the fireplace in the shoe garage area. So this thing can actually have a very cool um, sort of like night light system going on. And they didn't go with the lightsaber disco blue lighting, you know. Let's go to sleep. Let's go to sleep. Like, I, I don't understand this industry's fascination with the uh, the blue lighting package. It's just, but it's it's everywhere. And I've, I've really developed kind of a thing uh, about it myself, but uh, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Giving you a little look from the sofa here before we uh, continue onward. One of the things, I, I love the bunk arrangement on this. If I'm going to be picky, and this is not a hard thing to fix, um, like as, a, as an owner, is one giant curtain to close off both bunks. Now, I, I like I like having options. I don't like feeling painted into a corner. Um, I would prefer each bunk have its own curtain, but it's not that big of a deal. Typically, I think we can agree, if we're going to be sleeping here, we're pretty much going to be sleeping with both of the bunks closed off. A neat little way that you can kind of do this, though, is like you could sort of hang like towels off of that upper bunk and, and kind of close things off. There There is a way to sort of separate that. But nice touch, too. My daughter would love this. 
Uh, having USB plugs in each of her bunks, actually, I'm kind of glad that she doesn't have that because I'd have a heck of a time getting her off her phone and getting her out of there. Although we have a... Uh, apparently I, I bumped the stop button. Hopefully I didn't lose too much of my video. Anyway, moving on, we have, uh, with my daughter, we have very much like a no technology policy when we, when we camp. We'll get a small amount of screen time each day, uh, but not a whole lot. And frankly, once we're out there and you get it away from her and she starts making mud pies or whatever, no big deal. I love that big breeze window across the back here. And something else I want to point out, whether it's the sidewalls or the ceiling panels, you have these really cool blastic, uh, blastic? I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what that is. Blastic. Uh, plastic batten strips. That's what it was. It, blastic. Plastic batten strips. Uh, wow, I just, I didn't even realize I just created a new word. This stuff just, sometimes, guys, it just comes out of me. I can't even help it. Wish I could. Sorry, it's like a leaky faucet. You can, you can hit it with the wrench all you want, and my wife does hit me with that wrench. Trust me, it just doesn't shut off. I don't shut up very much, do I? You know what? I'm gonna, I'm actually, I'm gonna shut up. Let's get to the bathroom before I just keep rolling with this. So to begin with, you see that this medicine cabinet here is not just a mirror against the wall. It is actually a uh, medicine cabinet. In case you're curious about that, that's the little bungee holdback cord to keep that mirror door from jiggle banging around in transit. Down below, we have ourselves a uh, a nice sink space with some uh, room for you know toothbrush holders or whatever on either side. There's really fluffy, friendly, like leg room, hips, shoulders, everything in this. If you're tall, if you're wide, this is a comfortable seating experience. Now, um, I harp all the time about the manufacturers who do put a window in the entry door, but don't put a shade in them. I guess by virtue of the fact that they don't have a window in these, it does make it at least extremely private. And remember that little red switch down there is a, uh, you know, um, deadbolt. Whew, there we go. Uh, the, uh, th this is a shower, not a tub. And I like that it has that full kind of curtain wall that slides across. But if I get down low here for you, you can see that is a radius bend on that bar, uh, so that you get a little bit more extra elbow room up by your, your head area. And it's a nice larger rectangular shower. This is the kind of thing a lot of people, uh, like overlook. But if you talk to veteran campers, they're all the time like, yes, that is what I want in a bathroom right there. Now, it's a six and a half foot sidewall, so my head does have to be in the bubble, but I'm only here for a few minutes. I'm in the camper the rest of the time. I can make that work. And as we slide out of that bathroom, I actually want to kind of revisit the Versa Lounge real quick because you haven't seen it do different stuff yet. You've only seen it in like the L Lounge and like mini dinette or kind of mini desk mode. If you notice that that backer on that, that dinette seat can flip-flop on either side of that bench. If you want to just have a traditional sofa and dinette, you have it. Notice how you have all of that nice tote storage down below these, though. Um, that is 20.3 cubic foot of food-safe storage in that. And this is actually a little bit better angle. Look under that rear dinette bench. Notice how they didn't box it in. That's nice wide open space, so if you want to throw an extra tote there. Or, um, you know, around a U dinette, leg space can kind of be at a premium. Being able to tuck your legs under you so you're not playing the, the, the knee bash, you know, shin kick game with the person to your left or right, uh, frankly, is something I really like about that. Now, as we start pivoting over here, next to that refrigerator, you see this thing has just a ginormous, like, floor-to-ceiling pantry. Frankly, I think it's as big, if not bigger, than the refrigerator, which itself is uh, quite large. That is one of those 10.7 cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridges. Uh, that is uh, some serious cold storage capacity and it cools about four times faster than a passive absorption fridge. There's a very lesser known option available on these, by the way, if you're a serious boondocking enthusiast, you can actually sub in a two-way fridge, but it is a, uh, it's only about a six cubic foot two-way fridge. You really limit your total cold storage capacity when you do that. Plus, remember, these now have a roof solar prep plug in case you really want to, uh, you know, add some, uh, you know, dry camp extension capability there. Now, um, little storage around the entertainment center. But what I really want to do here is show off a couple of things that I really love that they do. Uh, in their big slide windows, you got those big panoramic viewing windows. But if the sun is just baking you out of these things, it's really nice to pull those down and just completely blot out the sun. And you can see how well of a job it's doing. The, the shades go down way past the windows. Look how much further down past the window treatments they go. So that if you are utilizing the Versa Lounge as just one giant mm -hmm. mega sleeper. 
Or you could make it like the Age of Aquarius and let the sun shine in. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. Although now that I've said that, oh, I really want to. One of these days I should actually get a vocal coach, you know, maybe then people wouldn't be like, oh no, unsubscribe, he's singing again. <laughs> <laughs> not that I, not that I blame him for it. This is all sealed edge press membrane countertop stuff, by the way. I haven't mentioned that. Something else I haven't mentioned: centralized air conditioning. Now that has become far more common in this price point in this class, but that is something that only a couple years ago was very uncommon, and it's still not a hundred percent across the board. You will find a dollar cheaper version of a camper like this somewhere that it's going to lack a feature like that. It'll lack maybe something like the Versa Lounge or the Tootsie Toaster over here. I want to talk about the Entertainment Center. And, um, you know, because when you look at this at a glance, you say, oh, man, that floor plan, that Entertainment Center is kind of trash. This is really not made with the idea of a lot of watching TV. But if you're in the Versa Lounge like I'm at, or if you're at that little mini dinette desk area, that little L Lounge uh, kind of facing forward, actually what's interesting is a lot of stuff in this camper faces forward. The only thing that doesn't is the longer section of the Versa Lounge down here, which, uh, well, no, I don't want to, there we go. I'll go one shoe. You know, as long as I am, uh, with my nice cheap Walmart socks, you see, there's a lot of leg room down here. You could absolutely have a nice, uh, lounge going on. And I mean, it just feels awesome having these huge panoramic windows all over you. Cross breeze just blowing, uh, you know, well, I've, across i would say through my hair um but uh yeah there ain't nothing blowing through my hair <laughs> and one last thing i want to show you here on the versa lounge is that there's no rules you don't have to have that table there you don't have to have the flip-flop backer in there you want to just leave this one giant open mega lounge, lounge. how cool is it that you can do that like, name another stick and tin camper that has a sofa and dinette that can sleep two adults like that. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't happen. It's not very common. And, uh, this is this is one of those things, like, if I do sit down here, I've talked about all the windows. All the windows are definitely on the driver's side of the RV. That's just a very common thing that happens in floor plans like this. Very limited door side window coverage. With that in mind, I really wish there was some kind of window in the entry door. Although... Um, you know, if it's going to be open for screen door time, I get that the window wouldn't do anything. But even if it was a frosty glass window, just let some light in over there. I don't know. I'd appreciate that. Notice how they have an actual door for the bedroom. And this is a simple new for 22 little thing over here. Just a light switch for the ceiling lights. It doesn't have to be fancy. Sometimes something just has to work. Uh, another new for 22 item down here is the little laundry uh, hamper, a little laundry chute area right next to what I'm going to call the dresser storage, this little cube situation you got going on here, little converter cubes. Um, they're lightweight, they're simple, but it's a really smart use of the space in here. And you can always take them out and use them for other things. Or what you can kind of do is let's say there's two or three or four of you camping. Each one of these can belong to a different person and be like some of their own, like, here's your shoes, here's your underwear, kids, go get dressed. No, close the windows, don't do it in front of the window. <laughs> Um, my parents had to be very explicit with the instructions that they gave me growing up. <clears throat> and in an x light, I think that storage is, uh, th those cube things are really useful because an x light has a more swept back nose than a full blood Wildwood. It's a little rounder, a little more blunt up front. So they don't really have room for a full cabinet up here, but you've got all that storage below the bed. I actually kind of like that you don't have to climb over everything to get to it. And even here in the bedroom, you still have, uh, like, the breeze across windows. Those still have the nightshades. But one of my favorite things Wildwood does, it's so simple. They call it CPAP storage pockets because you see the household outlets are actually inside the closet. Personally, I look at that and I'm like, finally, a phone charger station where the little light at night doesn't bother me. Like, my wife wears one of those little sleep masks to keep the little red light on her charger from bugging her at night. You don't have to do that in here. You can just tuck it in there and have it away. This one's travel accessibility is excellent as always. Maybe not as obvious sometimes, uh, you know, when you look at this, but if you, you can kind of snake around it a little bit here and be ginger when you move through the slide out. You want to do that uh, as briefly and as lightly as possible. And if you do so, you can move all the way from the front to the back of this RV. You can get to the bedroom, the bunks, the kitchen, and uh, it, it doesn't matter actually if you come in the front door 
or from the bathroom door. You can make a, a full traversal of this. And that's actually one of the other things about having outside it has mismatched steps. Here, here's what I mean. So on the main door, we have those stable steps up there. Along with the strong arm stabilizer jacks we're going to see in a little bit. Takes so much of the herky-jerkiness out of this RV when people come and go. Um, I actually credit Wildwood with what I think is best-in-class stability. They are very good about not making you seasick when you're sitting in it and somebody walks through the RV. But back here on the bathroom door, they have the traditional fold-out steps. These can be very, very handy if you're in a tight parking spot or a tight storage facility. Sometimes you can't get those uh, stable steps open, but almost every time you can get these open. And with having that full front to back uh, ability to travel through the RV, you can get through this thing. I mean, as long as you can open that door, you can get through it. And I'm, I'm kicking myself. I don't know how I didn't lead with this. The enclosed sectionalized accessibility found now on all of the Wildwoods. Um, that, it, 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 that is something that was originally only on the big full Wildwood. And then it, it actually jumped down to the littlest brother, the FSX series, which is actually uh, a smaller size below this. But x Light kind of got missed. And they sort of looked at each other and went, huh, well... That makes about as much sense as trying to slam a revolving door, which is a very good way to keep my Uncle Gary occupied, by the way, if I have to uh, leash him up somewhere. He'll stand right there and try to slam one of those uh, until you come back and, and peel him off of that. He's relentless. But uh, the point here is it adds extra protection to those holding tanks where they just weren't there before. Now, that doesn't magically make this a Four Seasons camper. I'm not going to try to... I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> 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 Goodness gracious, I'm so sorry. It doesn't magically make it a Four Seasons camper. It just adds some extra protection, you know. Uh, also very handy for road debris or if you happen to you know, bounce over a little critter. Now that's the back of the little laundry hamper, which is nice. When you get done camping, you can just grab this and, and take your laundry inside. And you see the little drill bit adapter down there for the jacks. That is what we like to call the cordless jack system, where uh, you know you can just you, you pretend you're a NASCAR pit crew driver, basically. Now the front baggage door here on your Wildwoods, they have uh, made that a dry erase panel, and I don't know if I would use that to keep the kids occupied or if I'd use that to, like I said, keep score if you're playing a little lawn game or something like that. Either way, I don't know. Maybe I'd leave a uh, I'd leave a message for my neighbors on there. Stay out of my beer cooler, Bill. <laughs> Bill. Always in the beer cooler, Bill. That should be his name, Beer Cooler Bill. I don't know why they don't call him that, regardless. Now, the uh, mini camp kitchen over here is actually an optional thing. In the x Light Wildwood series, uh, all of the camp kitchens are optional. I like how it has this little prep space once the griddle's cooled or you just haven't used it yet. But, of course, we have the handy griddle cooking station. And you notice how it... Uh, it, it slides right out there pretty far so you're not accidentally melting the paint off the side of your camper. Now, as always, I try to be fair, and I hope you appreciate these little fair points of discussion. I've never claimed any RV was ever perfect, and if I could ever make one request of Wildwood, it would be put some kind of door in the end. No, oh, did I just say put a door in a door? I'm an idiot. Put some kind of window in the entry door. There we go. Even if it was just a frosty glass one, even if it wasn't full viewing with a privacy shade, I would really appreciate that. Uh, that's just something that I look for personally. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't bother you. The uh, steps over here. I mentioned at the uh, er, uh, earlier when we stepped outside how those take a lot of the herky jerkiness out of it. But I want to make sure you get a good look at this. The front and rear jacks all have the strong arm stabilizers. And I think if you talk to anybody who's used those, 99% of the, the users of those things absolutely sing their praises, and I am a member of that 99%. I think those are so much more effective. Even then, like, now, if you, you add some X checks, they can work in addition. I just don't think you need them. You know, I don't think you need to do that. Obviously, we have the direct entry bathroom door here, but uh, I know that it looks weird sometimes when there's just a toilet staring outside. Remember, again, you got that little deadbolt door. So unless it's Smokey the Bear coming to get you, um, chances are no one's getting through that thing. At least not until you've had a chance to pull your pants up and, and dive out a fire escape window or something like that. Hopefully, uh, you know, that never comes to pass. Now, this does have a fully walkable roof. It does not have allowances for a ladder. So kind of keep that in mind. One of the things, though, with the Wildwood X-Lite series, 
they run on a different slide system from the full big wildwood and that's really about the only significant difference between them very similar to gray wolf and cherokee the only real difference here is that these use a schwintech slide that rides above the floor whereas a, uh, a full blood wildwood uses a rack and pinion slide that goes through the i-beam which requires a taller chassis which is why it sits higher in the air and uses a three-step entry instead of two in case you were curious there you go, a little knowledge bomb. Now there's a black tank flush on the back of this thing. Uh, the uh, uh, slide over here with those panoramic windows, that is also all prepped and ready for slide awnings. But one of the things I wanna show you, I meant to pull one of these down a little further, is on the inside, we saw those blackout shades. On the outside though, it's a nice bright white so that it would be almost like a radiant barrier itself, like a heat reflector. So if you're sitting just in a really hot summertime sun situation, between those blackout shades and the, the overall primarily uh, you know white skin package on this and the white shroud on the air conditioner, it will be a, a fairly efficient system for keeping your family comfortable. Now remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees, we just do everything else. So let us know how we did today and let me know anything I can do better to try to improve for you. I'm always working on my craft uh, and uh, d doing the best I can to bring you the best information. Again, we, are, we try to be fair, we point out the highs and the lows and if you like that, make sure you take a moment to hit that subscribe button and like our video and we'll see you next time. Take care, stay safe, have fun and happy Halet camping everyone.